In this episode, part two of how much did Mao's Little Red Book and Marxist-Leninist ideology influence African Americans in the 1960s? I will attempt to add clarity to other directions the Black Panther Party and its members tried to take that may have led to the group's implosion. Welcome to Four C's One Family. Mao Zedong amplified Chinese Communist Party propaganda by making public announcements concerning how he and his government interpreted the oppressive and deteriorated state of the American black population. On August 8, 1963, Mao's statements supporting African Americans in their struggle against racial discrimination were meant to give China global legitimacy in the eyes of people in other nations who also felt that they were being suppressed which later springboarded into the spread of Maoism in parts of the world. On September 29, 1971, Huey Newton and other Black Panther Party members were invited to and traveled to China, which preceded Nixon's February 21, 1972's trip to China. Newton met with Premier Zhou Enlai and petitioned in front of the Chinese Communist Party's Central Committee to negotiate with Nixon for the freedom of the world's oppressed people. Now, what we should be asking ourselves is, was this a coincidence? The Black Panther Party's invitation to China, along with Mao's statements supporting African Americans and their struggle against racial discrimination, may have placed the U.S. government in a make-or-break situation that they had to face head-on in a global arena. The Black Panther Party also built a limited relationship with North Korea under the then-leader Kim Il-sung. Many Black Panther Party members became intrigued by the North Korean ideology of Juche, which referred to relying on what you have to sustain your resistance. Although considered a hermit kingdom, in 1969, Elvich Cleaver traveled to North Korea with his wife for an anti-imperialist journalist conference. Cleaver admires the discipline and the patriotism of the North Korean people and the government's reliance on self-defense. While Elvira Cleaver and his wife Kathleen were in Pyongyang in 1970, she gave birth to her daughter, Joju Yonghee Cleaver. At the time of this episode, Yongji Yonghee Cleaver is currently a professor at Georgia State University. North Korea's denunciation of the United States made it easy for Black Panther Party members to feel akin with their ideological algorithm. Through positive media representations and active and outspoken membership, the Black Panther Party raised awareness of the demeaning impact of racial discrimination. Over time, the BPP succumbed to internal and external interferences brought upon itself by not maintaining total cohesiveness among its most outspoken members, which gradually destroyed any positive perceptions of the group. However, most of the reasons for the group's demise came from the coordinated response from the FBI and related agencies that used borderline tactics to suppress the party's initiatives and exacerbate internal disagreements through their counterintelligence program. This counterintelligence program resulted in the arrest of many Black Panther Party members. And in 1982, the Black Panther Party, for the most part, dissolved. All of what I presented is in the past tense, regardless of the Black Panther Party and its members' positive and negative choices. It should be interpreted as the results of events that forced the nation and its citizens to move in a more positive direction. Regardless of this, let's ask ourselves if the suggested actions promoted in Mao's literate book and other Marxist-Leninist-based ideologies were followed and used to overcome America's political and social issues. Would it have caused an American cultural revolution? And how would that have changed the status quo in America today? It's just a question. Currently, the relationship between the US, North Korea, and Russia is still pessimistically inflexible. And the world has a clear understanding of the events that took place during and before China's Great Leap Forward campaign, Dao Yuan Jin, from 1958 to 1960 
as well as the violent ruckus behind China's cultural revolution, which devastated people's lives by eliminating personal choices and public expressions up to the current day. Take a look at how and why Xi Jinping thought is overshadowing Mao Zedong thought and how the Belt and Road Initiatives is causing nations to go into debt and lose total control of their resources. On the other hand, and let's be honest, should China be blamed for initiating its well-planned approach to expand its global influence while the rest of the world remained entangled in their own internal confrontations? It's often difficult to understand how people under financial, social, and political stress can become desperate and select imported ideologies that over time degrade or endanger their existence. Should the Black Panther Party have been more selective of the ideologies they associated themselves with? Or was Mao's Little Red Book a needed element that helped give Black people in their communities the determination to unite and continue their fight for civil rights? The chances of movements in democratic nations being influenced and remotely controlled by foreign governments are causing grave concerns in many countries, which is something to think about. What would have happened if the ideologies promoted in Mao's Little Red Book led to an American version of someone promoting an ideology or thought that forced everyone in America to live by every word this individual says? This makes me wonder. Because citizens of democratic nations have the right to engage in peaceful discourse and demonstrations, the effects of external elements taking advantage of the social and political conflicts boiling within democratic nations can become almost impossible to detect. I do believe that Mao's Little Red Book did in some ways encourage not only the African-American community to become more proactive and self-reliant. Today, I'm more concerned about ideologies or imported ideologies that aren't being carefully, well, questioned or, or reviewed to check if these ideologies are harboring time bombs or Trojan horses that can be used to control not only a movement, but also a nation. Keep in mind that tyranny often revolves around struggles and later become led by an authoritarian leadership that, that can never be questioned or doesn't allow room for other opinions to come into existence. This may not be the situation in all cases, but we still must remember that we are walking on thin ice. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before it sees one family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.